Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today we have a 2006 6 liter Power Stroke. Now this one came to our shop as, uh, it needs an engine. Uh, someone else looked at it, not sure what the whole situation was, but, uh, you know, to them, they're, what they said was it's consuming coolant a lot, it's smoking and running really bad, so it needs an engine. So, it actually came to us, and I, I think they were just looking at an engine, because that's what they said, they needed an engine. And I happened to overhear this, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, went over, did a quick check, pulled the EGR valve out, and found the intake manifold full of coolant. I mean, it was super, like, the intake manifold was, like, pretty clean, uh, indicating that a lot of coolant had been going through there. So, we are going to put an EGR cooler on this truck. So, when you do an EGR cooler, you should always do an oil cooler at the same time because one can cause the other to fail. It, you have to remove the intake manifold uh, to do the EGR cooler. You have to remove it all to do the oil cooler. It's better to just do them together uh, and then you know that they're going to be good for a long time. They're going to work together. You don't want to pull your intake off and do your EGR cooler and then have to turn around to your oil cooler or vice versa. If your oil cooler fails, it makes a big mess. You don't want the oil cooler to fail. EGR cooler will just cause coolant into the intake. It'll cause it in the exhaust, in the engine. Uh, but if the oil cooler fails, you'll get oil in the coolant. And you don't want that because then you have to clean all the hoses. A lot of times you have to replace all the hoses. So it's not worth it. So I'm going to show you how to do the EGR cooler and oil cooler in this video. Let's get into it before I do that. Hit the like button, hit subscribe button, and hit the bell so you get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Let's go check it out. 2006 Ford Power Stroke. We are going to be replacing the oil cooler and the EGR cooler. Step one, drain the coolant. Take off your degas bottle cap. Step two is really it's remove the intake manifold and step one of remove intake manifold is remove turbo. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get ready to remove this turbo. We're going to take off this charge air pipe, disconnect it down here and disconnect it there at the turbo. Uh, always disconnect them at the, at the turbo side and the charge air side. Don't ever disconnect them from the tube unless you absolutely have to. We're gonna go ahead and pull this air box out right here. You're gonna disconnect your mass airflow sensor. You're gonna take out your air filter minder sensor. Don't disconnect any of this. We're gonna go ahead and take these eight mils out right here. Pull both of these hose, hoses off and put a cap over each one of these. Just so you don't, I mean, we're draining the coolant. You don't really have to. I'm going to just so I don't drizzle coolant everywhere because we want to be able to move this bottle around and we're going to take off this, we're going to undo this hose clamp. When we undo this hose clamp and have this minder out and the bottle loose, you can grab this whole thing right here and pull up on it and the whole air filter box will get loose and you'll be able to wiggle it out. We're going to go ahead and get that out and I'll show you what's next. For the charge air pipes, I like to use this socket right here. This set is four charge air pipes, and I like to use the 7 16 This is snap-on. I'll just show you the part number. It's easier to show it here. There's the part number for this set of sockets. All right, I've gotten everything loosened up, so if you just take a hook pick here and just break this seal like that, you can grab this, pull it out like this. You can grab this air box and do that, and this whole air box will come out. Just like that. You want to loosen it up because this tab right here on the on the air on the air filter box will hit the bottle, and if the bottle's loose, it allows it to move around, and you can pull this whole thing out like that. Leave this hose attached, and the whole thing comes out as one assembly. All right, you don't need to lift. You don't need to take the drive belt out, but this right here, what you do is you pull on the belt. All right, so you're going to be lifting up on this tab like that. You're gonna grab the belt like this, and you're gonna pull, and you're gonna reach down with your other hand, and you're gonna lift that tab up, and it will go in 
to a spot and it will hold the tensioner in the unlocked position and then all you have to do is then we just slip the belt off the alternator and that's it we leave it in place all right so when you're going to do turbo work uh, what i like to do is normally there's a clip in each one of these i like to take the clip out i pull the bottle forward i release the clips here and over here and i pull this this harness up and over the top of this and I take a bungee cord and I just bungee this up to the windshield wipers to get this up out of the way. So the next thing we're gonna do is we need to take this off. We got a, a, a worm drive here. You're gonna have two eight millimeter bolts right through here holding the this housing to the bracket. You're gonna take those out. And you have that right there, that PCV, you gotta pop that up out. So what I like to do is just take a screwdriver right through here and lift up and you can pull it up and out and then get this out of the way. All right, you're gonna go ahead and take the alternator out. Now, if you're just doing the turbo and you're not doing the EGR cooler and everything, then you don't have to take the alternator out. We're just doing it because we're doing the whole job. Go ahead and get your alternator out since you already have your belt off. Um, you're gonna go ahead and get that off like I showed you. You're gonna take a big pry bar and you're gonna go through this plastic charge pipe into the engine mount right here, into the bracket. And you're gonna to try to just, and you're gonna pop it like that. So putting it back on is a lot more difficult, but that's how you pop it loose. It'll come off down here easy. We're gonna just go ahead and, uh, and walk it out like that. All right, the next step, we're gonna cover a few things. You're gonna go ahead and take out this oil feed pipe, two tens up top. There's gonna to be an eight millimeter at the bottom. You need to go ahead and just take this all the way out. Take it off of here, pop it out of the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect the mass air, uh, the map sensor. So normally this map sensor hose is hard as a rock. So I usually like to leave it connected here. And I just unbolt, the, I just undo the connector. And then I unbolt the map sensor and I bring it with the intake. But since this one's real new, I'm going to go ahead and just pop it off and get it out of the way. Uh, we're going to go ahead and um, disconnect the VGT uh, connector. We're going to go ahead and this one right there, we're going to go ahead and take that Marmon clamp and, and get that loose. We're going to run the nut all the way to the end and I'll show you what we're going to do with it. Uh, this one over here at the outlet of the turbo, we're going to go ahead and get that one off too. And there's going to be three bolts bolting the turbo right there. There's a 10 there. There's a 10 over on this side and there's a 10 on the back side. We're gonna go ahead and get those three out. Get these ho these uh, clamps. We're gonna go ahead and get them popped loose so we can get this turbo out of here. All right, you don't wanna go ahead and you don't wanna take the nut off. What you do is you run the nut almost all the way out and you can grab the back of the clamp and go like this and it will pop out. Okay, and now we need to pop these three sections loose. This one's loose right here. So we got to get these popped and these are a little tricky to get. A lot of times if you can come with a screwdriver at the very beginning of it and then hit it with a hammer, it'll pop. I'll try to, sh I'll try to pop this one and I'll show you that one. We're going to do the same thing to the clamp back there. All right, we got everything off the turbo. So this is the oil drain right here. So we got to get up and off of that drain. So if you put a pry bar right here and a pry bar on that side, you can pry both sides and you can get it to pop. And then you just have to wiggle it out. Now remember, you can do this with the alternator in. So we have a ton of room right now. All right, next step is gonna be a bunch of stuff. You're gonna go ahead and get your Ficum out of here. Uh, you're gonna have uh, two tens in the front and either two tens in the back or two eights. Now you're gonna go ahead and just lift this up, get the three connectors off. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take all the injector connectors off. They are right here. You just push the clip in and pop the injector out. Uh, we're gonna do that because we're gonna remove this whole harness. It goes from there to these injectors over to the other side. We're gonna get it out of the way. We're gonna disconnect all the connectors, the manifold temp sensor. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, there's an ECT sensor here. We're gonna disconnect that because of the harness. Uh, we're gonna go back here to the IPR, get that disconnected. We're gonna take off this heat shield right here. Uh, there's a ground right there. Disconnect that ground so it doesn't break. Uh, we're going to disconnect this heater hose right here. We're going to take off this throttle elbow. Uh, it's uh, just four bolts. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull the EGR valve out. And then, uh, yeah. All right. So a couple other things that make things easier is right here, the alternator cable. Um, if you unbolt that from the battery, you can slip it out. You just have more slack in the harness. Um, getting the intake out and through the harness is, the, is one of the trickier parts. 
Uh, the other part is obviously uh, getting it back from the cooler. But anyways, so we've got all this disconnected. We've got uh, all of our stuff out. So at this point, um, one little tip is I always, I always recommend upgrading to a blue spring kit, uh, your fuel pressure regulator. Um, I had so many times where I did this job and I got done and then the fuel was leaking and we had to go back and do it in the car and it's a pain in the butt. And so I do it this way, sell a half hour and, uh, and just get the blue spring kit. But this one was covered in dirt. And so when I sprayed it off, you could see that the fuel is leaking. So this one needs a fuel pressure regulator um, kit. Uh, so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the oil cap off, take the fuel filter cap off, uh, get all that uh, fluid to drain down. We're going to disconnect all the fuel lines here. Now, if you ever wondered what these zip ties are for, these zip ties are for uh, is when you disconnect the fuel line nut, it doesn't fall down. It stays right here. So you're going to see it's on all of them uh, right here and the other fuel lines. So you're going to get all those disconnected. Uh, and then from there, we're going to go ahead and take out the turbo pedestal. It's going to be four bolts. Uh, before you do that, you're going to go ahead and take the oil drain for the turbo. And you're just going to pull it out like that. Be careful because now your opening for your high pressure pump cover is open. Uh, let me see if I can show you. It's under the pedestal. So that hole that's right down there, that is a straight hole into the high pressure pump uh, cover. So you want to be careful. And once we get all that done, I'll show you what's next. All right, once you get the pedestal out, uh, you're going to go ahead and uh, you got to take out this one bolt right here for this water pipe. Now, the, w the right way to do this is to come down here and to take the bolt out and to take this water pipe out. Um, done it sometimes sometimes this flange right here doesn't want to let go and so a lot of times i just bend this little tab up and i can get the intake in and out uh, the next thing we're going to do is we need to take the the oil filter uh, base and fuel filter they're connected so once you have all these fuel lines disconnected uh you got four uh t45 and i got the carbine tools uh t45 uh long torques and uh, took that out so we're going to pop this off just make be careful it's going to make a big mess uh just stick some rags down there and protect it there's the oil there's the hole in the in the oil pump cover that i was showing you so stick a rag in there so you don't get any debris in there um especially once you have this uh, this engine valley open like this there's a lot of dirt down there uh yeah before i forget to tell you go ahead and take this uh base of this uh oil filter uh the oil filter stand right here out. It's a T27. You got a bolt right back there. Take this out and the and the this will twist out and go ahead and just take it out so you don't break it. All right, next step is to loosen up. You got to get this Marmon clamp uh, loose and get it off and get it pulled back uh, off of the split here. You got to get all the intake bolts out. Um, what I recommend doing is drawing yourself a picture because there's a few studs. There's a stud there, uh, there's a stud there, uh, just so you don't put them in the wrong spot. Also, while you have it apart, so I don't forget to tell you, uh, make sure that you clear this uh, map sensor port out, so these things uh, get carboned up, and then you have boost issues. Um, and we gotta disconnect this, so you're gonna twist this hose until you get it to a certain spot. I believe these lines go on the side, and then you can wiggle it and it will release. I'll show you a new one in just a second so you can see what I'm talking about. And uh, a couple things I forgot is right here, you can see right there, there's a bolt in there where the, where the fan shroud bolts to, uh, right there. Okay, so it goes through the fan shroud. It's a 15 millimeter. You got two of those. Um, All right, so here's a new one. This is what those lines are. So right here you can see it has the tab in there. Uh, so what you got to do is it'll be on there like this. It'll be locked in here. And you turn it to the side. So those tabs are on the sides. And then you can twist it and pull it off. All right, so we're just about to get this off. <clears throat> All right, so one little tip. All right, under the back of this uh, uh, turbo outlet, is the back bolt for the intake manifold. So you gotta kinda finagle this around to get it out. 
Now, when you're taking this apart, I go ahead and take all the bolts out. Uh, when you put it back together, the bolts will be in uh, because they'll be holding the intake gasket. So here's the Marmon clamp right there. I've got it off and it's on the EGR cooler side. This is the actual EGR cooler. Don't take this bolt out and don't take these two bolts out. They hold the EGR cooler to the intake manifold. You only have eight bolts up each side and that's it. So now what we're gonna do is you gotta stuff some rags down here. It's gonna make a big mess. This EGR cooler has a bunch of coolant in it uh, and so as you lift this up, uh, don't forget to bend this tab, uh, but as you lift up your intake manifold, it's gonna come out of the Y pipe in the back and you're just gonna lift it up and out. So here's actually why I'm doing this truck right here, that, uh, that EGR cooler is uh, full, of, well it's not now because I dumped it out, but you can see all the coolant in there. This thing is smoking like crazy. All right, so if you're not doing an oil cooler, you can uh, you can bypass this. Uh, well, the first step is right now, before we do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and get all this cleaned up. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all the intake ports. I'm gonna stuff a rag down there and try to get it as clean as I can. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I like to stuff a rag in each of the ports to keep anything from going down, down there. And we're gonna clean up this valley real good because the next step is we're gonna be taking off this oil cooler right here and replacing the oil cooler that's underneath this, uh, this lid. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that, but you wanna make sure everything is clean and you got most of the dirt up so that way it doesn't fall in the hole when you open this up because it's straight into the engine, all right? All right, to get the EGR cooler off the intake manifold, you have a stud here and a bolt here. And then you just have a bolt back here and this just supports it in the back. I just take a, a screwdriver or a pry bar right here and I pry it down. There's an O-ring on here where it goes up inside. Uh, there's a metal gasket back here where these two bolts are. And uh, right here is just a bolt. So once you do that, it'll pop off because I'm gonna get this intake manifold in the parts washer and start getting it clean. The good thing about the EGR cooler leaking is that there's not as much carbon inside this intake manifold as normal, so. All right, now that we got everything off here, now if you're not doing an oil cooler, you don't need to do this step, but what I did was I cleaned all the intake ports, all right, I cleaned all the intake surfaces, I should say. Um, I got most of them scrubbed off really good. I took a screwdriver and I just kind of scraped around everything and I took an air nozzle and I blew it all out. Now you want to cover up your oil your oil filter base here on top of your oil cooler. All right, make sure you stick a rag right in that hole. That's where your turbo drain is. And I like to just plug everything so that way nothing gets in, in the, we don't want any debris going into the engine, the exhaust, anything like that, the, especially the high pressure pump. So the key here is that along this, the edges of this is gonna be an accumulation of dirt and grime. So you can see how I scraped along the edge pretty good to where the main thing is that when you pull this oil cooler up, a bunch of debris doesn't fall down in the hole. You're gonna clean it and you're still gonna have to support it. And, I mean, not support it, but uh, keep, you know, get, keep every, anything from getting in there. But what you're doing is just making sure there's not a pile of dirt that's gonna fall in there. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take out all the 10 mils around the perimeter, okay? And we're just gonna pick this whole thing up. Now what you wanna do is you wanna have like an oil container here uh, to set it right in because this thing is full of oil and coolant and it's going to make a mess. And then the valley of this is going to be full of oil and we need to clean that out. All right, let me get this off. All right, before you pull the oil cooler out, you want to build yourself a little dam right here because uh, the minute you start taking the bolts out, oil is going to start to come along the sides and you can see this is in full of oil, but you don't want it to run back that way. So you just build yourself a little dam and then now I'm just gonna take a little sucker and suck all this out and get it clean. Be careful that you don't get any red rag uh, particles inside of the block. Get those out, don't leave them in there. I've heard of them destroying the engine. All right, so I got the oil out of here so you can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, you're gonna have a screen down here that sits right here. I went ahead and pulled it out so I could get it clean. And uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and wipe out all the oil. I'm gonna finish cleaning the whole surface, all the perimeter. 
Make sure you spray out all the all the bolts that uh, all the holes for the bolts. Like this is a bolt that returns. This is for the oil flow through the through the block. But this is a, a hole for the oil cooler. So you want to make sure you get all that cleaned out, get the valley clean, and get this covered up. Don't leave it exposed. Then we're gonna come over here. We're gonna go ahead and disassemble this. So you're gonna have the 27 and the 45 Torx, and you're just gonna take all the bolts out around the edge. All these. Now these ones here, when they're full of dirt like this, take an air nozzle and a pocket screwdriver and, and scrape all the air, all the dirt out. And you're gonna pop all those loose. And then this cover is going to come off, and then this top cover is going to come off. This section here, this is actually held on by the oil cooler from underneath. So let me go ahead and get uh, get this all uh, disassembled, and I'll show you what it looks like from underneath. All right, here's the underside. So you got two 13 millimeter bolts right there, and you got two 13 millimeter nuts uh, right there. All right, so what you're going to do? Is you're gonna go ahead and pop those off, okay? And then you're gonna set this like this in between two wooden blocks. And you're gonna put the wooden blocks along the edge of the, of the oil cooler cover. And you're gonna to try to put something right here and hit it with a hammer. So this, this part in the center here is the oil cooler. So you're gonna put something here and then you're going to hit that with a hammer and then hit this one and hit this one and hit this one and hit this one and then it will usually pop out uh, and then we can start cleaning. One little tip of advice before I forget to tell you is make sure that first of all you check this sensor to make sure there's no oil inside because these are common to leak is the oil pressure sensor. But take this out and your fuel temp sensor and before you clean this because high heat on these things I found that taking these off and taking this off and not and not removing these and cleaning it, I found this this oil pressure sensor to fail uh, really really soon after doing this job. Uh, I always take them out, so mine always been pretty good. But other other guys, I've had to fix it after after the fact. So this is what this looks like. You just have some gaskets, all right. So once we get all this off, we're going to go ahead and get everything clean. Uh, this would be a time if you wanted to rebuild your your oil filter bowl. You got your relief stuff like that you got some things in here you can get a kit to rebuild that um, and there's a couple tips on this cover once we get this all separated all right a couple tips once you get everything um, once you get everything apart and get it all clean uh, right there is a vent hole for the cover you need to make sure that you blow air through that and you'll feel it on the other side uh, the other thing is uh, this gold uh, right here flip it over like this and it's right there you pop that through and one of the o-rings is going to go on here all right so you're going to go ahead and open up your kit uh we got the the ford kit right here and this is going to come with the oil cooler it's going to come with all the seals the screen for underneath the cooler uh, make sure you follow the directions really really good i don't want to all right once you get it all uh together this o-ring is bigger than the one that goes on here uh, and then these two are obviously they're they're thinner they're the only ones that are going to fit you're going to put the two big fatter o-rings on the bottom and the smaller ones on top lube everything up with oil and then you're going to make sure don't forget to make sure you put this o-ring and this o-ring on here um, make sure you put all of them but just double check before you put this on and then you're just going to flip the oil cooler in like that and you're going to put your two bolts in, flip it over, put the nuts, and you're just going to draw it together. Tighten these down, tighten those down until it's snug. All right, once you've torqued your oil cooler in here, you're going to notice that uh, this part of the oil cooler comes up even because it seals in the cover. And this top, the, the bottom O-ring seals in the cover and the top O-ring comes up. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your, the, the, the oil cooler cover and you're going to put your gasket in there. And then you have another gasket over here, all right? So that's going to go on, and you're going to just lay that on there. You're going to take this piece here, you're going to make sure it's clean, all right? And then that one is going to lay upside down like this, okay? So you want to just take like a little mallet and just tap this down. This is what this O-ring is going to seal on. Once you do that, you're going to take this cover, put it in the right way. 
and you're gonna do like that and you're gonna get all your bolts your five T30s and your five T40 or 45s, I can't remember. Uh, and you're gonna snug them all down and I'll tell you what the torque is. All right, so here's a little picture of their intake manifold just in case you didn't draw one of where your studs go. And then here's your two for your EGR cooler. That one's a stud, that one's a bolt. Uh, so the oil cooler, uh, the big ones are 16 foot pounds and the smaller ones are 89 inch pounds. Your intake manifold is gonna be 96 inch pounds torquing it down or eight foot pounds. And if you do this, I don't do it. I'm just telling you the EGR cooler clamp in the back is 53 inch pounds. I torque it to feel. I never torque it to spec ever. So let me get this torqued and then don't forget to put your O-ring back in here for your base of your oil filter housing. All right, this is also a good time to upgrade your uh, fuel pressure regulator to a blue spring kit if you have not already. Here is the part number. So this comes with all the parts to change this over to a blue spring. I believe your original Ford uh, factory spring is about 50-ish inch uh, foot pound, uh, PSI of fuel. And this bumps it up, I think, to 65 foot, uh, PSI. So, and actually Ford doesn't even sell the regular one anymore. The only one they sell is a blue spring kit. All right, so now we're gonna start getting ready to assemble. Uh, we've got everything disassembled and everything clean. So now that you've got your whole area clean, make sure that you blow out every single hole for the oil cooler cover, for the oil cooler mounting, right? And also your four turbo pedestal bolts or holes. Make sure those are all blown out. All right, so once we do this, what I was taught by an old timer one time was take one quart of 1030 oil and pour it in the valley here. So pour it in under here. And once this fills up, push your screen down, pour the rest in here, set your oil cooler down. Uh, I was told a long time ago by a guy and he said that he finds these things start a lot better uh, when you do that, because it's gonna be really hard to start these. So I, I pour one quart of 1030 in the, in the in the hole here, I'm gonna put the oil cooler and I'm gonna to torque it to 16 foot-pounds. Do not forget your screen. All right, so now make sure your intake manifold is clean and we're going to get the EGR cooler ready because it goes to the intake. So here is the part number from Ford. Now there's a core on this, so you gotta send the old one back. So you're gonna get your EGR cooler, all right? It's gonna come with the little grommet on a tie right here. So you can put this to your intake manifold. It's also gonna come with a kit. They don't give you a part number because it's just a bag. This is everything you need for the EGR cooler. This is all the gaskets and also all the, all the hardware and O-rings for the turbo. Let me get this opened up. All right, so here's what's gonna come in the kit. You got three bolts for bolting the turbo down. You have this for the oil feed, the gasket on top. For the bottom of that pipe, you have, there's a blue O-ring. So that's gonna be for the turbo feed. This is gonna be for your PCV hose that goes into the valve cover on the driver's side that's attached to the air intake tube. And these are your oil drain upper and lower O-rings. And this one is a big fat O-ring that goes in the front. I'll show you that in a minute. And these two are for the cooler. So you're gonna come over here and you're gonna put your studded bolt on towards the back of the, of the EGR cooler. And you're gonna put your gasket on here, your metal gasket doing this one-handed. All right, so you're gonna put those in. It also comes with one black O-ring and that goes on the cooler. So you're gonna slide that into this port right here, okay? And then as you do, you're gonna tighten these two bolts and then you need to put your other bolt here that tightens it up to here to hold the back of it. So right here in the driver's front of the intake manifold is this sensor here. The manifold, uh, it's the temp sensor. Uh, what you want to do is I would take it out and clean it while you're here because this is completely covered in carbon And it obviously can't read because that's a resistor right there. So pull it out clean it. It also helps you clean your intake manifold All right, next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and put all your bolts in your intake manifold with your manifold off the car. The only one I don't put in is this last one because it gets it's really hard to do with the uh, outlet of the turbo with the downpipe so what you're gonna do at this point is you're gonna do that on both sides. You're gonna come over here and you're gonna put your intake on, your intake gasket, and you're just gonna barely start the threads of each bolt. 
just enough to hold the intake in place and your bolts are gonna stick up like this. You don't want this sticking through too much because it'll get stuck when you're trying to put it in the vehicle. Now make sure that you pay attention to these notches here to make sure that they fit. So the notches are gonna go, those notches are gonna go to the inside like that. Make sure it sits flat. All right, the last part for preparation is this gasket. Now I can't tell you how important, how, many, how important this gasket is and the metal gasket that goes up here, up here in the front. This will make a whistling sound if you don't get it in right, if it's bad, if you don't replace it, uh, and if you're missing it. Um, and then this right here will also cause problems. So what you wanna do is what I like to do is take some assembly goo right here and I put it all around and I put this on and I push it on and it will stick to this. All right, the last bit of prep is you want to take your hose here, all right? And the end that has the, the lines on it, that's going to go towards the front because it has the tabs in there that lock on to the oil cooler housing. So what you're going to do is I just put a tiny bit of engine oil here. You're just going to twist this and slide this up as far as it'll go so it does not get in the way, okay? Make sure you wipe off the excess grease around the outside edge. Now you can see on the inner edge of this EGR cooler, there's a notch sticking out. Well, that notch can create a very difficult situation for you if it doesn't line up perfect. That notch has to go inside that pipe in the back, right in there. It sits back in there, and the flat part of that pipe is where the gasket rides. That is the trickiest part of this whole job. You have to take the intake manifold and you have to go down at like a, I don't know, 30-ish degree angle. And you have to try to get the EGR cooler to go into the pipe, the intake to set down properly, and get under the turbo outlet. Put a jack under the, tur under the exhaust pipe in the back by the cat and jack it up, it'll stay out of the way and make it easier. So once you have taken this and you get it all lined up, you have to make sure that the pipe from the EGR cooler and the pipe at the back are lined up. You once the two surfaces are lined up, you wanna put your clamp on and snug it up. At that point, you want to try to start starting all of your intake bolts. Make sure all your bolts start, torque the clamp, one thing that helps is having a bungee and pulling the harness out of the way. That's what I did. That's why I have it all the way forward and it made this job so much easier. When you're putting your intake on, your fan shroud is going to kind of get in the way a little bit. Pull it back. It'll drop down in place. On this one, I got lucky. I put the intake in and it basically just sucked right into the, to the pipe in the back. You can see that's what lined up looks like. At that point, you can put your clamp on and you can start all of your intake bolts. Once you have all of that, once you have it all started, torque the clamp, torque the intake. After you torque the clamp, you're going to torque the intake manifold. Remember, the intake manifold gaskets are plastic. Make sure you torque them. I torqued them with a torque wrench. I had one time where I must have over torqued it. It broke the plastic gasket and it had a boost leak when I was Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take this hose right here and you're going to, hang on, I'm trying to get uh, where the light is because the light is on my head. All right, so here, we're just gonna take it, we're gonna twist it, we're gonna bring it up, we're gonna, here, click. Now, the most important thing about this is that you have it here where your lines are at the top and that you wiggle it and try to pull it back and make sure it cannot go back uh, because if it does, it'll pull back a little bit, you'll have a leak. So just double check that. You're gonna go ahead and do everything in reverse, put your ficum on, put your, put your harness on, put your ficum, put your turbo pedestal. When you do your turbo pedestal, make sure that you put your turbo drain uh, back in and then we'll get the turbo ready to be put in. Now, once you put the turbo in, it's gonna go in the same way it came out. You have to finagle it in just like this intake manifold. Everything has to just sit in perfect. You've gotta get it on the drain 
but up and under this. Now this and the turbo have to line up exactly the same way as the CGR cooler did. You see how this pipe can move. You may need to have somebody with a pry bar over here. You may have to use a strap if you're by yourself. You want to pull this forward and make sure that this and the turbo are 100% together. This will cause a boost leak, it'll cause an EGR code, and it will give you a little whistle when you boost. All right, so I, I gotta still put the thickum on, but you wanna make sure that you have your bracket on. Make, don't forget your ground here. Don't forget to plug in your IPR back here because this is a pain in the butt. If you forget this, you're screwed. This is what it should look like here. Your harness should be in the valley. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clip my, my harnesses on. That way it holds them in place. This one's missing most of them. Uh, one more tip, and I've done this many times before. Go ahead and plug this, mat, this uh, manifold absolute temp sensor in uh, now so you don't forget. Um, you can leave all this, because you're gonna have to run your, when you put your, your oil filter and fuel bowl back on. Uh, this is what it should look like with your with your uh, pedestal and your turbo drain. It should be sitting on that and pushed all the way in. Now I'm going to put the Ficum on and then I'll be ready to put the turbo in. This is what it should look like. All right, so here's what I was talking about. You can see that that hole down there for the turbo, that's lined up and that one's lined up and it's on the drain but what you'll notice is that it is not lined up here. So before I do anything, I'm going to get this lined up and get the clamp on, and then I'll start finagling the bolts in, but make sure that this is pulled as tight as you can before you put the clamp on. All right, so at this point, once you get your turbo bolted in, uh, you got your Ficum in, um, don't forget to put your oil, your oil pipe in first. This is where I got mixed up. The bolt for the oil pipe is a T27, uh, and then the 30, for the oil filter, for the oil cooler housing. So that's where I got mixed up. Anyways, it's a T27 for that. Put this on now, it's a lot easier. And then, so then now I'm gonna go ahead, I left all the harnesses loose. So now we can wiggle this around, make sure you've connected all your connectors, oil pressure, uh, fuel temp, manifold absolute temp, get your glow plug harness back on. Uh, don't put your alternator on till last. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put my blue spring kit in and put this in. should be straightforward from here. Okay, so in this video, uh, the one thing I didn't talk about is when your intake EGR cooler does not line up with the pipe in the back. Now, most of the time it gets pretty close. Sometimes you have to finagle. I have had a couple times where it did not line up at all. So it's almost like somebody had disconnected the Y pipe in the back when maybe they did a turbo and, uh, and they didn't put it back right because it just didn't line up. I've had to loosen up the front two bolts on the EGR cooler up by the O-ring, loosen up the bolt at the back where it's supported. Uh, I've had to finagle the intake manifold. I mean, I've had some that took me like an hour uh, just to get it to all line up. So if everything is on the truck right, it should set right in. Uh, but your intake manifold, the, the little bolts, the gaskets, uh, getting the notch inside the pipe in the back, that can all be pretty tasking sometimes. The first couple times you do it, it's pretty tricky. Uh, it gets easier, but like I said, after I've done quite a few, I had one that just fought me to death. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this helps you. Uh, maybe you've never done one before. Uh, it helps you feel comfortable doing this job. Uh, if you're a gasoline mechanic starting to work on diesels, hey, here you go. This is how I learned. So thanks for watching the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell so you get notified of all my future content which you don't want to miss. Also, check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for my daily life as a mechanic where you get to see all kinds of cool stuff through my day, tools, trucks, cars, gas, diesel, uh, you know, show you some really cool tools that I use uh, on a daily basis uh, to get the job done and make it easier. Also, check out my merchandise store where you can get a t-shirt, coffee cup, and support the channel. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you next time.